Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the fourth North American Online Qualifier for the Halo World Championship. Now jumping into another quarter-final matchup, we have CLG versus Dream Team. Uh, CLG, we've already seen once today, looking very, very good. Uh, obviously, took out Optic Gaming, and what well, looked as if it could have been a very close game after game number one, but game number two proved to be pretty much the exact opposite of close. Now, CLG, breakout, Elmite, something that um, I know we, we talked about last qualifier. They play this very, very slow and very, very methodical. They they absolutely do. CLG is, you know, it's hard to argue that they don't have some of the best teamwork uh, in the entire game right now. You've seen some great performances. Uh, we talked about how individually skilled they are as well. And a team, a game like Breakout, you know, it's a whole nother take on Halo. It's played completely different than any other Halo has been played, any other game type that we've seen before in any of the previous Halos. So it does have its own entire kind of learning curve and strategies that you need to come up with in order to succeed on a game type like this. Looking at Royal 2. Uh, his perspective right now has Snake Bite up with him in this two versus two. And CLG, one of few teams who, in two versus twos, will sometimes happily play for that draw. They don't necessarily go out for that win. They can play pretty passively, but Dream Team come out and take round number one, uh, managing to win that 2v2 without dropping a player. Uh, absolutely here. You know, great round out of uh, Dream Team there. Uh, you saw two kills out of Jesse Thrizzle, two kills out of Ares Carries. Uh, you know, and these are two uh, extremely good players as well. Like, this whole team is uh, extremely talented as well. You know, you can't necessarily look at names and use that to determine who's going to, you know, take the outcome of the game. And uh, I had the pleasure of coaching uh, Ares Carries before. You know, great individual player, uh, great teammate. Uh, and, you know, definitely looking forward to a, a competitive game here out of these two teams here and look to see a Dream Team put up a better performance than we had Optic do against them in the last series. As you say that, it was a one versus four for Prototype. It's now currently a 1v3. Doesn't really have many options here. Recognizes the flank will be coming in and as soon as he turns to make sure that it isn't happening, two people from CLG run directly towards him and shut him down relatively easy. So that's going to tie things up at one round apiece now. As we head over into oh, round number three, Sean Royal nice two on your screen. He's going to head up towards top BR. Is he going to pick it up? Yes, he is. Just jumps straight over. Doesn't want to get hit by that grenade. Right, and we see these rounds are going pretty quick so far as well. Lots of times in those breakouts, we'll see standoffs. We'll see players go low. It looks like Royal two is watching that flank right now. Uh, but this overall, as far as breakout games go, these have been pretty quick, uh, pretty quick rounds so far. Royal two still on your screens. As you said, Fast-paced rounds, that's for sure. 2v3 now, as Snakebite was able to shut down Jesse. Royal 2 hitting the flank. We'll see, maybe right. catch This is a great guard. play by Royal 2 here, getting on that flank, uh, starting to push up. Uh, great great ta uh, plays out of Ogre 2, trying to stay alive there. Unfortunately, wasn't able to do so. We do our, have ourselves a 1v2 situation, but we've got two pistols versus a BRR here in the hands of Royal 2 now. So it's going to be really interesting to see how this plays out. The Dream Team needs to be making sure that they are working together, getting a double team on Royal 2, because this BR is, you know, extremely powerful, two shots to kill somebody. Uh, so Royal 2, uh, you know, definitely CLG uh, is at the disadvantage here in this round. But as far as the weapon and strengths go, uh, Royal 2, no reason why he wouldn't be able to pull out real clutch plays here. Nice use of the crouch walk as he gets behind Prototype. Now all of a sudden just slows down the game completely before crouch walking once again. Seconds. Flag has been picked up and he's put himself in a great position to go big here. That's going to be Tyra running, shuts down the first. Can he find the second? It's prototype. No, not going to happen. Wow. It was close though, that's for sure. But Dream Team coming out, managing to pick up that round. Round four. Yeah, and that was great opportunity uh, for Royal 2 to make a clutch play, but he was shut down there. It's awesome plays, a heads up play. He thought almost he was going to do that. He did catch Flag Guy not looking at him, picked up a free kill, uh, but unfortunately was just a little bit too late on the rotation for that second kill and was taken out there. Board with Frosty, who um, has been a phenomenal player. I, I tweeted out earlier on every time I watch this guy play, he seems to put up massive performances. And actually, you got a reply from. Gandhi himself saying how Ogre 2 has a fantastic eye for talent and he's built a lot of successful rosters and well Frosty in this round showing you exactly why that's his second pick looks to try and find the third maybe getting a little bit overzealous but Royal 2 able to pick that one up now just immediately running at the last player alive another headshot from Frosty and 
I feel like CLG really are finding themselves in a nice little groove now. When, when the team was obviously Round formed, etc., heading into the online qualifiers, a lot of people said, yeah, CLG could potentially shut down EG. Now, though, I feel like CLG really are making a, a good case to say, hey, you know, CLG no longer that un... Oh, what's the best way? No longer the, the guaranteed number one team, I guess. Uh, and they could really make a, a big fight for that number one spot. Yeah, I mean, I definitely put CLG as one of the, the top teams in the game, if not the top team right now. We've seen what they were able to do against Allegiance. Uh, you know, Allegiance isn't able to do or play their kind of play style if they want to, like they do against other teams, uh, against a team like CLG, because they are uh, CLG is that team that is extremely methodical, but so individually talented among all those individual players as well. And, you know, kind of highlighting on what you were discussing earlier about Ogre 2 and the players he does align himself with. Uh, you know, you have seen that uh, starting off back in the Halo CE days. They did have a couple different rotations of their players. But then you saw him go over to like the Pistolas and then over to the Royal 2s. And he's definitely always had, you know, arguably one of the most individually talented players on his team at all times. Definitely helps when you have some great players on your team to win as many championships as Ogre 2 has. And currently, CLG find themselves three rounds to two in the lead. Of course, first to five, so only two more rounds needed for CLG. Let's have a look over at Tyri Ronick, who's making a big push down towards bottom middle, but did get tagged up, and fortunately for him, Snake Bite goes straight for that challenge. Now Ares left in a pretty difficult position. Had to trade that kill against Snake, Snake Bite, which pretty much forced to, but now leave left in a one versus three. Flag is being pulled as well. He needs to book it over towards his home flag, but I don't think he's really even going to have enough time. Tagged up from up top. Can't even challenge. Yeah, when you find yourself down low in a situation like that, the other team knows uh, easiest way here is just run and get a cap. Don't run any or don't run the risk of potentially losing this round. And in order to do that, don't necessarily challenge the player that's hiding bottom center. He's not a threat at that time. Just grab flag, run it over, and it's a good chance he's not even going to be able to react in time. Over two throws out that grenade and what could be the final round here of this breakout. Of course, this quarterfinal matchup, so we'll be best of three. CLG looking to advance. Oh, Snakebite. <laughs> did he really just kill both? He did. Snakebite just got two kills. Okay, Snakebite. I see you out here making plays. Uh, but CLG so far playing extremely, extremely well. That's going to be end of game number one. CLG ending that one in, uh, in style. Yeah, it looks like Dream Team, they wanted to try out a flank that round, but something that we haven't seen a lot this tournament are ground pounds, and you saw the perfect ground pound, the best ground pound I've seen in the tournament so far, right out of Snakebite in that final round to go ahead and win that game. Yeah, props to, to Snakebite there, picking up two. But as we said, CLG uh, take that pretty convincingly, 5-2. to 1-0 up now in the best of three quarterfinal for now. Quick commercial break. When we return, jumping to map number two. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the online qualifier number four, the North American uh, qualifier for, of course, the Halo World Championship as we jump into the quarterfinals where we see Dream Team versus CLG. CLG with a 1-0 lead after a comfortable breakout. We're heading to Slayer Plaza now, where CLG look to advance through to the semi-finals for, of course, the, the second week in a row. On board with Ogre 2 straight off the bat as he makes his way pretty aggressively over towards Sniper Rifle, puts a couple of shots on anyone who may be playing for OS. In fact, decides, hey, Seems OS is free. Let me just go ahead and pick that bad boy up. Managed to get up with his life as well. CLG with a very, very nice start. Absolutely. There you see Ogre 2 grabbing the uh, OS. Nobody uh, made an initial like, uh, rush to it 
like you see at a lot of games, they, they set up, they played it back, they wait for an opportunity, let some nades blow up, and over two is able to grab that. You see him start charging as well, uh, kind of looking at what he's doing. He was actually just stuck by a player, but you know what a lot of people might not know is one sticky nade will not necessarily kill OS guy if he has the full OS. So he takes out about half of all of the OS and about half of his regular shields, uh, but unfortunately does not kill him there. And we do have now a six to one kill lead, uh, even with that start here for CLG. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Good stop for CLG, and it's going to continue. Eight to one, Royal two. He has sniper rifle. Frosty's going to challenge two up at top snipe. See if he's going to chase these. Oh, well, they both line up pretty much perfectly. He almost got the melee mid air. Decides to track back, but no, mistimed it the second time. Prototype drops down and says, You try to slap me across the face? Nah, not today, my friend. He was able to pick up that kill, but it doesn't matter. The trades came in anyway, and it's now an 11 to three game. And it's surprising watching CLG play, play Slayer this qualifier. It's almost as if they basically said, hey, we're used to playing so very passively. Let's just try playing super aggressively this week. And they're convincingly taking leads in Slayer at the beginning of these games. We, I mean, we saw a similar thing, um, I, I guess, up to gaming. Oh, yeah, we really did here. We have a 14 to 5 lead. Uh, you've got uh, CLG kind of all over the map, trapping Dream Team over in Yard. You've got him controlling top center. You've got him controlling uh, the top of S4 here. Uh, and great push out by Dream Team. I actually wasn't expecting it to work out that well. But what we have right now is Royal 2 with a couple of great snipes, picks up quick double kill, and completely shuts down Dream Team's push. He pulls out the BR as well, expecting a challenge. Matthew just tried to get completely out of Hotel as Frosty as if he may be setting up for the OS. Manages to get out alive as well. Royal 2 still on your screen with that sniper rifle. Just playing a little slow now. CLG have changed that tempo, much like what we saw against Optic Gaming. Frost, uh, sorry, Royal 2 should know that the Dream Team are going to be spawning down below as the next sniper comes up in 30 seconds. Oh my goodness me! Royal 2 just destroyed Jesse whilst weak with that sniper. That was a fantastic shot from him. He's really showing you the moves with that sniper rifle. Yeah, that was incredible there. We've got a 23 to 7 lead. And part of that reason is because we're seeing shots like that out of right. Royal 2 here. Uh, that was the second to last shot in snipe though, uh, as well. So he didn't have a, a lot of opportunities or ways of escape. Uh, enemy team was also spawning in yard. There's a good chance he was about to get sandwiched if he did not hit that shot. Don't worry though, he's managed to get across the map and pick up the new sniper rifle. So <laughs> he may have run out of ammo, but he was very efficient with that sniper rifle. He picked up a lot of kills with it. And because of that, as you mentioned, El, my CLG have a huge lead and it's going to continue on as he picks up one more. He is sitting very pretty right now at 7-0. Royal 2 having the perfect game thus far. Will it end perfect though? That's going to be the question. Grenades being thrown and Royal 2 says, hey, nah, I don't fancy this. I'm going to back away. He's going to go for the no-scope. He does go for it. Trying to put on a show for everyone watching at home. But Ares able to finally give Royal 2 his first death of the game. But... 30 to 10 lead, Alamite. I mean, I feel like this game is already over. Right, I mean, this is exactly what we were seeing just out of the last series here between uh, Li Liquid and Renegades. One team starts off, and what we've actually seen is whoever grabs that first OS really is able to capitalize and, and build up a good lead. And what we're seeing is a lot of these teams that fall behind uh, off the start, they don't know what to do or how to kind of bring this back. Um, you know, it's really interesting to see because, you know, we might actually be watching a CLG and Renegades matchup here coming up in the future. And one thing I want to take a look at is, you know, these are two teams that have been able to perform extremely well on this game type and whether or not this game type is going to be in the next series for that. Royal 2 made his play towards OS. Sniper and OS now. It's another shot from not picking up the kill though. Pulls out the BR. Has prototype pretty much trapped so can throw two nades. That should be good enough to kill, but no. Actually, Prototype does get away, <laughs> and Royal 2 is like, hey, how do you not die? I'm going to throw another grenade over towards there, but hasn't pinned in that far corner. Doesn't even really need to worry about it. Sniper rifle on his hands. Royal 2 doing so much work in this Slayer matchup right now. 40 to 13. CLG playing so very well today. Because already 1-0 up in the series after that breakout win. As Royal 2 misses the no-scope that time and finally does fall. But as I said, uh, CLG doing a lot of work so far this game. 
Right, and this is another you know completely dominating performance, extremely impressive performance. Uh, looks like some of these teams um, know how to play this game type, and other teams uh, aren't exactly as familiar and just not as comfortable on it. And you're absolutely seeing that reflected in some of these scores. Where you might see a close, um, you know, close earlier games like we just saw last round with that breakout, but now what we're seeing here is just a complete and utter dominance. Number two, just. Tries to walk around the corners. Frosty says, ah, "Don't worry, Oga Two. I, I got you. I'm just gonna ground slam and I pick up that kill." <laughs> oh, CLG just completely destroying Dream Team. I, I, there really isn't anything else to say. They have 15 kills. CLG have just come out and said, "Ah, we're advancing through today's semifinals. <laughs> no problems whatsoever." That was a brutal game of Slayer. If you've ever seen one, Snakebite picked up 16 kills and he six deaths. Royal Two with a. Nominal 15 kills, two deaths. Didn't get many assists though, so I guess you can you can look at me and be like, come on man, play play the team game, play the team game. Over to six kills, 13 assists, three deaths. Overall, just a fantastic performance from everyone on CLG. Uh, absolutely, and yeah, definitely highlighting on those assists there. You had uh, Sniper in the hands of Royal 2, who's just picking up mostly headshots, and when you're picking up mostly headshots, you're not gonna rack up many assists. And then you've got Over 2 who says, uh, Royal 2, you just sit there and snipe, I'll go ahead and go assist everyone. So, you know, great performances when you've got Ogre 2 backing up players like uh, Snakebite and Frosty. And then a player like Royal 2 who's got pr basically most areas you can pop outside of the map on lockdown. Everyone's right. popping out is getting blamed in the head and great performance from CLG here. CLG convincingly taking the quarterfinals, advancing on to the semifinals. Coming up next, I believe we have EG versus Team Envious. What a matchup that will be. See you guys after the break.